Travis. He, him. Sometimes she. I'm gonna, should I, I'm gonna check the car. What happened to your face? It's filthy. It is? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was cleaning the chimney. We have no chimney. What? Let's fucking go. Let's go. I guess. Spectacular. Give me 14 of them right now. Really? Mm -hmm. Do you know what's in here? I don't care. Don't Do tell me. No. I keep going back to that moment in the ICU when she looked at me and I see you. I see you. And you are Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Negasonic Teenage What the shit? That's the coolest name ever. Thank you. Enjoy your day. You too, Poppy. You too, Poppy? What you trying to get into? Hi, Poppy. I'm just... I'm going to become a lesbian because I hate men. I am a lesbian because I love women. I don't care about men. We are not the same. Our next contestant is Warren. He's Okay, so there's no more balloons, so go ahead and go. I hope she plays hot to go. Ooh, your screen time is taking away hours of your life. There are gay people and memes on here. <laughs> that is a benefit. Have you ever had coffee with a bottom? I'm not just a bitch. I'm a bitch with a backstory. Our next contestant is Warren. Okay, so there's no more balloons, so go ahead and go. Aha, thought I saw a gay with the fucked up sleep schedule in here. Take your LGBTQIASS, the fuck to bed. Don't point that gun in my face! Is you LGBT cause your gun pink? Damn. He don't got a clue in the fucking world. You are not the guy. You're not capable of being the guy. I had a guy, but now I don't. You are not the guy. There's a strong possibility that you're gonna get some uh, tranny fluid on your face. I think there's an awful lot of lesbians about nowadays. You can't move for lesbians. It's wall the wall lesbians out there. Yo, if you're friends with a trans person, it is not your job to go around telling people they're trans. Leave that up to us, or if anything, ask us first, because just going around telling people, especially behind our backs, it makes things way more awkward for us than it needs to be. Plus, not everyone needs to know. Most books on witchcraft will tell you that witches work naked. Oh, let's go. Let's go naked witchcraft, baby. This is because most books on witchcraft are written by men. Well, that was embarrassing. Being trans is so wild because why is it like being famous? 
most of your life you're like undiscovered and then one day you wake up and everyone's staring at you and you have haters and you have super fans who are so obsessed chasers you're literally famous i just sure? found his secret hideout how did she find my hideout uh how did you find his hideout this is the only building in Metro City with a fake observatory on the roof. Okay. And again, guys, I don't think there's a mass shortage at all. I think there's bitches need to talk to women of color. Because there's black masks, there's Hispanic masks, there's Asian masks. There are good supply out here. It's never a shortage. Uh -uh -uh. And you know what? They're not all skinny. <laughs> Cis straight guys in Brooklyn will really paint their nails and then spend the whole night interrupting women and non-binary people and taking up mad space in conversation. If you're going to benefit from progress with liberated aesthetic choices, just like make sure to contribute to that progress. Keep at it with internal work. Otherwise, it's just an empty signifier. You feel me? It's fine to look pretty. Just act pretty too. I'm gonna say something that's gonna blow the heterosexuals' minds. Are y'all ready for this one? Here we go. Most gay men are masculine. <gasps> I know, right? Crazy. But the thing is, right, right, I hear what you're saying. Oh, but I see so many feminine men. But here's the thing, lock in with me real quick, okay? When you go out, you're not asking people their sexuality just on the street, right? You're just seeing a feminine man and you're thinking, oh, he must be gay. Or you're seeing a masculine man and thinking, oh, he must be straight. But if you already believe that gay men must be feminine, that you're never gonna notice the ones that are masculine. That's called confirmation bias, girl. I built a free resource for the queer, trans, and ally community, and I think you should know about it. My name's Charlie, I'm the founder of Everywhere is Queer, which is a worldwide map of over 14,000 queer-owned businesses, and it's a free resource for you to connect, shop, find, queer-owned businesses locally or globally, wherever you are in the world. Have I said that it's free enough? It is available on iOS and Android globally. Online businesses are welcome. We even have a job board for queer-owned businesses and ally-owned businesses to post jobs. I wouldn't run, but move those thumbs real fast to the app stores to find our free app called Everywhere is Queer. Being trans has been one of the great challenges of- I love this interview with Hunter. I think it's great. I think she talks about a lot of really good things, but this in particular, what she's talking about being, being transgender and having these challenges as a trans individual, but not having it any other way, I think is so powerful. I've gotten to a point into my transition that I could look back at my hardships and struggles and my life. It has been- so hard to navigate being trans in this world but i i wouldn't i wouldn't do anything differently and that's the fucking powerful part right there baby recognize these colors or these ones maybe these if you don't keep scrolling if you do just give me 30 seconds we're a subtle pride brand we take the colors of the chosen flag and integrate it we wanted to provide an alternative from the big brands who just plaster rainbows on their products hike up the prices and are often just disingenuous like donating to homophobic politicians we also wanted to create designs which aren't this we hope our designs can be integrated into people's different styles and comfortably be worn year round. 15% of all our profits go to charity and we ensure all our clothing is ethically sourced and made. If you like what you see, please comment at heart. It really helps us out. But tap the link in the bio or go to equalityfreds.com. Do homophobic people genuinely believe that talking about or learning about queer culture makes a person queer? Like the whole idea that like, don't talk about that gay stuff around my kids, I don't want them to get the wrong idea. If you're a homophobic straight person, that means you know what being gay is. Here you are being straight, did learning about it turn you gay? If a person is going to be gay, they're gonna be gay, whether they learn about it or not. It's just one day they'll be having all these confusing feelings not knowing what it is, or 
you can tell them what it is so when those feelings come along, they can handle it better. Or those feelings won't come along and they're straight. Win-win either way because sexuality isn't that big of a deal. But like you've gone your whole life knowing what being gay was and here you are a homophobic straight ass bitch. So why do you think your children learning about what being gay is is gonna make them any more likely to become gay? If a person's gay, they were gonna be gay either way. Actually underrated queer artists of color. First up, Nadia of She Likes a Boy, She Likes a Boy, She Likes a Boy, but I'm not a boy fame. Now, when I first heard that song, I was like, not too much. But then I was like, this shit is actually mad catchy. And they have a lot of songs that are both very gay and very good. Next up, Beba Doobie. I feel like Beba Doobie has been up, but we haven't woken this up. But she does have a song that's called If You Fall In Love With A Girl that is a very cute, sweet, sapphic indie jam. Outside of that, her music is just like very good to cry to. Next up, Remy Wolf. If you think you don't know who this is, you absolutely do. She's had some hits that have gone mega viral on this app. They may not be the gayest in lyrics, but they're gay in essence. It's not hard to hear, not at all. Next up, Bailey. Every time I talk about Bailey's music, I develop a twitch because she is so underrated. Think sultry R&B, that is just sapphic as hell. Like she's saying the loud part and it is so good. Stream 16, meow. Finally, Jade Lamac, literally a TikTok lesbian who makes music and it bumps it's like uh indie slow but like with a little bit of pop edge and there's this one song constellations i can't tell you what it's about on this app but because i can't tell you what it's about you know what it's about so go ahead and stream that thank you <laughs>
and it's messed up because I'm always wrong. Like, I'll call him attractive and he'll be like, actually, I don't think he's attractive. I'm like, oops. Or when I say he's not attractive, they get mad and it's like, I told you I, I'm not attracted to men. I don't find men attractive. Leave me alone. Stop asking me. If you think your boyfriend who looks like every other man you meet on the street is attractive, that is between you and him and your god. Okay, that has nothing to do with me. And I used to be able to decipher what was conventionally attractive when I was a teenager, but it has changed so many times now that I just can't keep track of it. Like, are we still into that Timothy Chalamet, sick Victorian child vibe? Are we into Chris Evans or Chris Pratt? I don't know which one is the attractive one, but whatever, the whole like, look for Hollywood. Or are y'all into dad bods now? Like, y'all keep changing it and I can't keep track and I don't want to keep track at this point, honestly, because what does it have to do with me? Like, at this point, don't have conversations about men to me. I will say the wrong thing and I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. I don't know what we're talking about. Cis actors who have played transgender roles in Hollywood have been nominated for Oscars nine times and two of those times they have taken home the Oscar. Do you know how many times transgender actors have been nominated for an Oscar? Let's start with a breakdown of some of the most discussed cis performances of transgender characters in Hollywood. Cis female Hilary Swank portrayed a transgender boy in a 1990 film titled Boys Don't Cry. She also won Best Actress for her performance. The film has since received much backlash. Cis female actress Felicity Huffman also was nominated for an Oscar for her 2005 performance in the film Trans America. Cis male actor Killian Murphy depicts a transgender woman in the 2005 film Breakfast on Pluto, which follows the wild journey of Kitten finding her place and identity in the world. And Jared Leto won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for playing Rayon, a transgender woman in Dallas Buyers Club, a performance which has been critiqued as disgusting and a gross attempt at Hollywood earning inclusivity points without actually doing the work. Now there are many talented transgender actors in Hollywood right now. My favorite is Patty Harrison. Every time she appears in a sketch on I Think You Should Leave, I know it is going to be solid gold. She's hilarious. But the Oscar nominations show you that Hollywood loves exploring stories of transgender people, but why don't they hire transgender actors for these roles? The answer to my question at the beginning of the video, how many times have transgender actors been nominated for an Oscar performance? The answer is zero. Zero times. Yet nine times transgender character performances by cis people have been nominated. So what can we do? Well, I was recently informed by somebody who follows me about a film that is currently being crowdfunded right now titled Stakeout. The film is written and directed by Charlie Peppers, who is a writer who wrote an Emmy-winning episode for Ryan Johnson's Poker Face, which starred Natasha Lyonne. The protagonist of this film, Stakeout, is a transgender black woman portrayed by a transgender black actress, Marae Giselle. The film is pitched as X-Men meets Carrie, sort of a suspense thriller. It sounds super interesting. Check out their page on Seed and Spark. They have quite a bit to go in funding. I hope you'll consider supporting this film as we need to see more transgender characters portrayed by transgender actors in Hollywood. I've been thinking a lot lately about AGAB terminology and I've realized I wish it stayed a phrase and never became an acronym because from the acronym, it became a word. The actual acronym, like, assigned male at birth, assigned female at birth, the actual phrase is really good because it both is a good descriptor of what happened to me and it's a good critique of like the arbitrary system of gendering babies. And I say what happened because it is not something that describes who I am, it describes an event. I was assigned male at birth, I am not AMAB, and that is the main thing I want to talk about because since it's become an acronym, it has been used as a word because it looks pronounceable. It is no longer you were a map. It is now you are a map. It has become a part of my identity, a male part of my identity that I will never get rid of because it's used in the same place that biological male would be used typically. Um, and that's the problem I have with it. The phrase is both very clear in that it's a descriptor of an event and a critique of that event. The problem is I feel like the word usage is the exact opposite of the phrase and is the exact thing the phrase is trying to critique because it is the phrase, the word usage of AMAB and AFAB typically uphold the original assignment rather than critiquing it. And it is a thing that is a part of your identity. It is no longer a thing that happened to you in the past. Its usage as a word separate from the phrase has abstracted its meaning to all hell because it is now AFAB people, AMAB people. It is no longer people who were assigned female at birth, people who were assigned male at birth. It's just another gender binary. And it's being used to, you know, binary, non-binary people. It's being used to call trans men not real men. It's being used to call us trans women not real women. 
And my biggest problem with it overall is its use in casual conversation. Because now a lot of cisgender people, including cisgender queer people, are using it in a casual context, just as a way to say biological male, biological female. I made a previous 15 second rant video on this. And a lot of people in my comments have been saying, yes, hi, I'm a trans man. And I'm frequently called an AFAB in a casual context. Or hi, I'm a trans woman and I'm called an AMAB in a casual context. And that is the biggest problem because the casual, the casuality of it is just making it less of a criticism, less of a like important language is now just a word that means biological male, biological female. It's being used by cis people in the wrong way. And obviously the phrase itself originated from the intersex community. Um, it was just picked up by trans people later. I just don't want to speak on the intersex part of it because I'm not intersex, I'm a trans woman. So my controversial opinion is I don't think cisgender people should say AFAB or AVAB. I think they should use the full phrase, assign male at birth, assign female at birth. Because I feel like the word usage, like the acronym usage, just completely abstracts it from the original meaning. And I want cisgender people to have that, like original meaning in mind when using it. That is my controversial opinion. Trans people, feel free to give your own takes on that. But yeah, that's my opinion. A lot of people in the queer community say they're queer, but they actually are stuck in cis heteronormative like thinking. Like they understand their queerness and everyone else's queerness in a very, 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 very specific mode. And that mode is born from a cis heteronormative like understanding of the world. I'll give you two examples. One, can trans men be lesbians? I thought that we'd figured out the answer was yes, because historically there have been trans men who have identified as lesbians and there are still trans men who identify as lesbians. But I saw a post where someone said me when I get called transphobic for saying trans men can't be lesbians. And I commented like, oh, you don't actually understand this experience. Like a lot of people do identify as trans men and also lesbians. And everyone in my comments was a lot of trans men were saying trans men can't be lesbians. You're invalidating trans men for saying they can be lesbians, yada, yada, yada. And the entire time I would respond to these people and I would say, I am not calling trans men who are attracted to women lesbians. I'm not calling them that. I am saying that there are trans men on the internet and in real life, because people on the internet also exist in real life, that there are trans men in real life, historically on the internet, whatever, who identify as lesbians. That is not me calling you a trans man a lesbian. And I used to be confused when I first heard of he, him, lesbians. I was like, how can you be a lesbian and also a man? That doesn't make any sense to me. But then someone explains it and they said, oh, it's because like heterosexuality is not only like a state of being where you're a man to a woman. It's like a way of understanding the world and a community and a way of navigating the world. A lot of people who identify as lesbians before they transition um, continue to identify as lesbians after the transition because they find community in lesbian spaces. So it actually makes far more sense to say I'm a trans man and a lesbian than to say I am a straight trans man if you are constantly interacting with and dating lesbians. That makes sense. That makes sense. But you know who it doesn't make sense to? Straight people, to cis heteronormative society. Because cis heteronormativity says that you can only be one thing. If you are a man and you're attracted to women, you can only be a straight man. There is no room for anything else. Another example of how a lot of queer people have a cis heteronormative understanding of the world is how a lot of people talk about non-binary people. A lot of people say that non-binary people aren't really trans because they don't want modification, they don't want surgeries, they don't want to go on hormones, yada, 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 all of these things. Basically saying that non-binary people are like cis people who want to be special. But the thing is, is that that is not true. A lot of non-binary people, when they first come out as non-binary, um, don't want anything done to them. But that is not true. A lot of non-binary people will end up wanting things like done in the future. The reason why they don't want things done when you meet them is for a few reasons. One, a lot of them are pretty young. Um, when you're young and you're used to your body looking a very specific sort of way, you don't really have a great desire to change that when you don't know what is possible. Like it's a pretty classic tale of someone who is non-binary, um, who like has breasts, doesn't want to get their breasts removed when they first come out as non-binary, doesn't want to go on testosterone, yada, yada, any of these things. They just want to be respected as being non-binary. And then over time, they end up realizing, oh, I want 
top surgery, I want to go on hormones. And that doesn't happen because they feel pressure or because they want to like be special. That happens because when you are thinking of yourself as non-binary for the first time in your life, you start to realize that there are things that you took as a given that don't need to be a given. But a lot of people see that with non-binary people and then they just say, like, they discount that and they're like, oh, you just did this because you want to be special. And that's just cis normative thinking 101, that gender is the static thing that can never be changed or that you can never change how you feel about it. But the other thing too is that a lot of people don't want to, you know, do surgery or go on hormones because they simply don't want to. Like, they are fine in their bodies. They would just like for them to be treated a certain way, which is like, a huge part of what gender is, is how other people treat you. But people are like, oh, you say you're non-binary, but you have boobs and a pussy. So that makes you a girl. Like, do y'all hear yourselves when you say these things? <laughs> like, a lot of trans people don't want bottom surgery. Like, I've seen trans men who um, start testosterone and then they get a little bottom growth and they're like, oh, no bottom is for you. I don't want bottom surgery anymore. So like, Clearly, you can still have a pussy and not be a girl. So, like, but y'all think in a very cis heteronormative way. You don't have a queer understanding of the world, a queer outlook. And it's really difficult to have a queer outlook because you have to learn a lot to have a queer outlook. Like, I talk to my friends about people I see on TikTok who make all these big declarative blanket statements with no nuance about queer experiences. And it really frustrates me because I'm like, you don't understand queerness past outside of yourself in your own small bubble. But that's because similar to how a lot of women are like, I'm a feminist because I'm a woman, yada, yada, yada. And everything women do is feminist. There's this understanding of the queer community that everything you do um, is like inherently queer in its outlook because you are a queer person. Not the case. Queerness is an ideology. It is an understanding of the world. And if you don't learn that, and if you don't put yourself in that context, you will just parrot cis heteronormative things, but you will use your identity to validate that and say it's not cis heteronormative. Like saying trans men can't be lesbian. You say that because of how you understand your trans identity. But that is not how everyone else does. And that's not even how everyone else has before you. I could make a convincing argument that it is more recent to say trans men can't be lesbians than to say that trans men can be lesbians. But I'm not gonna do that because it doesn't even matter if people identified as trans men and lesbians historically, honestly, it doesn't matter. What matters is that people identify that way now. And that is incredibly queer. Anyway, that's my post. Uh, I have a link in my bio and then also in the description for people who you can donate to um, in, you know, you know where. I don't want to say because I can't tell if it, people are blocking, if TikTok is blocking my videos over it. Um, but yeah, please donate to those people. Um, they are very far from their goals and they would really, every, every dollar counts and helps. Thank you so much.